All right, hello everyone. We are back again for a short little study today. Uh, today we're going to be going over some scriptures that irrefutably prove and just conclusively outright, no debate, that the Old Testament law did teach a faith and work system. And um, the reason why we're doing this study is because I've been, it, well, and it's been going on for a very long time, but this this, this ever-growing, and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger, of this thing of people saying that the Old Testament law taught faith alone. There's no works involved at all. And um, we're going we're gonna to see in the study, it's just simply not true um, at all. And the people that just, you know, a lot of these people that just they keep saying that, they're just, they are willingly ignorant. There are plenty of scriptures that say otherwise, but they just, they just do not want to hear it. And because they're just absolutely, they just do not want to route the divide for the, for the life of them. Um, another thing, too, i got to say, say is because this is something, this, this group of people, they always try to make, misrepresent you and they try to make it sound like you're teaching works and works only or something. No, that's not true. There is there is definitely faith involved. I mean, read Hebrew, Hebrews 11. It's a pretty good example of that. But the fact remains is, people, there are works involved. Now, one of the one of the things is, and this is their go. This is the go-to passage without fail. Is every single one of these guys will take you to Ephesians chapter two. Ephesians chapter two. Looking at verses 8 and 9, hopefully you can hear me good over this wind. It is a bit of a windy, brisk day here in northern Indiana. But um, what it says over in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 is it says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And so what these, these guys do is they take what Paul says over here, and then they apply that for the rest of the Bible. It's salvation has always been by faith alone, always has been. Always will be. They've always there's a, there's always been a total security and you know, and all this, all this other stuff. And now and and so, but the thing is, lies guys. That one of the things they'll start you know they'll just start whining about is, you know, it, they'll start talking about the character of God and say, oh no, see, you know, you, you know, you're teaching against God's character and you know God cannot allow works as an entrance to heaven. And the reality of that is that's true. So you're saying, well, how can you say the Old Testament law taught of faith and works? Well, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna see this, but the the fact of the matter is, is people, and this is again, I know I'm gonna get hate mail for saying this, but it's the reality. If you just just accept what the Bible has to say, not one single saint in the Old Testament was ever saved. They just weren't. There was not not one person had their sins ever taken away. No one. Uh, again, the blood of Christ was not on there, so again, so again, no sins were ever taken away. They never had his imputed righteousness. They never had Christ. They never had Christ's own righteousness. They never had that. And uh, we're going to see in the scriptures here that it, it, no, they in fact had their own. And then, I mean, again, no such thing as spiritual circumcision. I mean, none of these things were ever talked about in the Old Testament. It's just not there. No one was ever born again. That's why not a single person ever went ever. At, in the Old Testament, they never went to heaven. You can't find one. They went to a place called Abraham's bosom. You can read that in Luke 16. We're not going to go there for the sake of time, but that's where they went. They descend down to the heart of the earth into a place called Abraham's bosom. And so when Jesus, so when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he went down to the heart of the earth. He didn't go to hell, as some people will try to tell you. No, he went to a place called Abraham's bosom. And then again, as the scriptures talk about, he led captivity captive. You can read that over in uh, what it, what's the note here? Uh, Ephesians chapter four, verses seven through ten. Again, I'm not gonna go there for a second time. Just read it in your own. But that's what happened. And so then, in that place, then he was preaching. To, he was then preaching to them. He was then able to then impute his own righteousness to them to then allow them to get to heaven. You know, that's what's going on there. So anyone that says, oh, they, oh, so, oh, you know, against God's character, God can't allow works in His, in, in his kingdom. Well, that's exactly right. That's why no one in the Old Testament went to heaven. That's why none of them were ever born again. Um, again, you can read in Exodus uh, 34, verses 6 through 7. Again, their sins were never taken away yet. They were covered by those sacrifices that they did, but they were never taken away. That's why they needed the, they, they, they needed the death of the testator, who is Jesus Christ. And um, look, and the, fact, and the fact remains is two people, again, God cannot allow sin of any kind in his you know, domain, I guess you could say. Again, read read a, um, a Psalm five one through six, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Psalm four through six, excuse me, and then uh, and uh, Habakkuk one, chapter one verse thirteen. Those are just examples of again, God cannot allow sin in His presence. And the pro and so, like as we said, no one in the Old Testament had their sins taken away. So 
therefore they couldn't go to heaven. Now, with that being said, with all that being said, we're going to look at this, and we're going to see what what is the problem here. Why, um, why do why is there such contention? Why is there such confusion on the on this issue? Go with me to Second Peter, chapter three. Second Peter chapter three explains why there is such confusion and contention over this. Second Peter chapter three, looking at verse fifteen. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness and that's the problem um, look the, the fact is a lot of what Paul preached were mysteries that were never preached they were never truly revealed <laughs> excuse me prior to that they were no in sure in some cases there was some foreshadowing involved sure there were some you know glimpses of that here but it was but it was still a mystery it was there you just couldn't grasp these things so then Paul comes along then all of a sudden this is it I mean, again people if if paul's epistles were not there if, if you had i'm just you kind of giving a, a rough estimation if you had you know mid acts onward and romans through philemon the bible would, would just read as normal there really wouldn't be too much of a difference the problem is paul comes along and then he's preaching to the gentiles and he's preaching faith and nothing else and so that puts a huge wrench because the because now it's the Old Testament taught something completely co contrary. Then you read the general epistles; it's it, there is again the element of works there. You read again the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, with with the exception to John. But with Matthew, Mark, and Luke, again you can again very plain works involved there. The early part of Acts that's there in the time of Jacob's trouble; it's there, and you know, it, it, so it, it throws a huge wrench in, in the thing, and that's why you have to you have to rally really divide. And the problem is, though, these people that don't want to do this, many of them, they are unlearned and, and, and unstable rest. You know, they, they just rip it up and rip it up and destroy it, and they just they want to fight against it. And it's to their own destruction. All these guys whine about the character of God, and yet many of these same people, they don't, they're not even saved to say this stuff. I mean, the, 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 I mean, a lot of people are the same people that are going to have you to believe that repentance is just a, it's just a change in your mind. Um, there's no conviction of sin involved. You just pray a prayer, and then you're in. Um, and and some, some people go even further to say, oh, no, there's no prayer involved. You just, you, just, you, you, de you, you decide when you're saved. You just say, I believe, and you know, it's me that believes, and I'm saved by my faith, and so that's it. And then, and then again, nothing happens afterwards. You can live how you want to, and, and then, you know, oh, you know, oh, we'll, you know, you know, we'll talk about sanctification only, only after you've been you know, poke and ask a little bit. Then we'll kind of okay, okay, okay. Now we'll talk about salvation or um, sorry, sanctification. But uh, other than that, they just live how they want to. It just goes on and on. And then you got people. They have this this crazy lie that people that I you hear you hear all the time. You know, people like again people people like Jack Hiles and uh, John R. Rice or people that used to say this stuff. Or and you know now people like Stephen Anderson, many others that now they'll tell you that uh, you are looking forward to the cross. The Old Testament is saying they they're looking forward to the cross and and now and now it's people today now now we look back towards it and the idea is, is that you would just uh they they understood the death and burial resurrection and they had faith in their in the in the in the messiah you know the, and then and that was the means of salvation which is insane because all you gotta do is read the gospels matthew mark luke and john and every single gospel account when jesus outright explicitly talks about how he's going to die, they're sitting there confused, they're rebuking him, and they didn't understand until after the fact he's been resurrected. Then they go, oh, you know? So I don't, I don't, I just do not understand how anyone can come to that conclusion, but it's because they're unstable and they want to rest the scriptures to their own destruction. And then bring this up because if you're not careful, again, beware, lest you also, being led away with the air of the wicked, fall from your own fastness. You can just, they'll get you all messed up if you don't, if you just, if you start listening to these guys. But with all that being said, we're going to look at just some very plain passages that plainly teach that the Old Testament law did in fact, in fact involve works. Okay, We're going to start in Romans chapter 3. 
And, uh, and you're gonna find a lot of these places we're going to. I don't even have to go to the Old Testament to show you this. We can just we can sit right in Paul's epistles because again, Paul is preaching faith and nothing else. You know. And this is by no means the the, the end all end, the end all be all definitive study. There are plenty of scripture we could look at. I'm just looking at a, just a handful that I think pretty much conclusively prove the issue. But looking at Romans chapter three, we'll start at a verse. Uh, we'll start at verse 26. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness. His righteousness. Talking about Jesus Christ. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Verse 27. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. Okay, remember what we said in Ephesians 2 8 9? You know, not by works, lest any man should boast. You know, not by works, lest any man should boast. Where is boasting then? Is it, it is excluded. Now let's say here, by what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. You oh, you mean the, the law? What are the law are we talking about? The law, of the, the law of the land? The law of America? No, of course not. You know, the law of Rome? You know, no, it's not, it's not what I'm talking about. It's talking about the Old Testament law. By what law? Of works? Well, I just got done saying where he's boasting. It's excluded. Not by works, as any man should boast. Exactly, the Old Testament law taught faith and works. There's an element of works there. Nay, but by the law of faith. Verse 20, therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. The deeds of the law? What, you mean like stuff you would do? It, exactly. People, it taught, it, it's, I, it's me, I don't understand this, especially, I, there's some, there's again a group of people out there, I talked about this in the Romans 10 Controversy, the book, if you don't know what I'm referring to. Um, I'll put a link in the description. Um, but the, the thing, but the thing is, though, there's people they they will run to verses 24 to 26 and say that's the gospel, you know, which it's not. But the whole whole, whole thing there. But, but the point is, though, all you gotta do is just keep reading. You, you, there you go. I mean, it says it right there. I mean, so these same people that say, oh, the Old Testament law didn't teach faith and works. That's no way. But okay, here's a passage where they some again some I'm not saying all these, just some of these guys say here hey look here's the gospel. The like I do is keep reading it. It tells you that the Old Testament law involved works. <laughs> so, but like I said, you just you, you just can't have people. These these people are willingly ignorant. Not many of them. Next, go to Romans chapter nine. Romans chapter nine, looking at verse uh, starting at verse thirty. And again, you, you gotta look this up in the King James Bible. Uh, follow along with me. Don't just sit there and you know and you know and drool behind the computer screen and, uh, and let your brains leak out your ears or something. Look, look these up, okay? Actually, look at it. Cause that's 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 the thing too. I gotta say this because I don't emphasize because I don't emphasize near enough. And because again, we live in this day and age of cultural you know you know cultural Christianity. You know you know more called churchianity or people they just sit behind it. They just kind of sit in their nice padded chair or the pew or whatever you want to say. And they're just kind of sitting there, and some the the you know the reverend and the preacher he's up there just you know just you know you know just up there saying whatever, and no one checks him out. And so I'm I'm telling you out there, check me out. Look at the scriptures. And and if and if I'm wrong, okay, tell me why, you know. But it's gonna be from scripture. But anyway, looking at verse 30, it says, "What shall we say then, that the Gentiles which fall not after righteousness have attained?" To righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. But verse thirty-one. But Israel, which followed after the after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. So wait, what? So they're they're following the law of righteousness, but they still couldn't attain to it. Well, how's that? Verse thirty-two. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith. Here you go. But as it were by the works of the law. I, I just, like I said, I, I just do not understand how people say, oh, there's no, there's no works involved. What, what was that talking about? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone, as it is written, Behold, I lay in sign a stumbling stone and a rock of offense. Whoso believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And that's referring to Jesus Christ, of course. And people, that's what the Jews stumbled at. Because... And I'll, I'll give you an example. You don't have to turn here, but we got Romans chapter 8, verse 3. For the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. 
the law was weak in the flesh in the sense because you had to continue to live and do certain things. And so the problem is when Jesus Christ shows up and he's, and he's telling them, no, he's telling, again, the best example I have written down my notes, the best example of this, you can see this is John chapter 6. He's standing for the Jews and he's, and he's telling them, I am, the, I am the bread of life. Your fathers ain't man in the desert and are dead, you know. You know, he that he that you know, he that drinketh me, you know, you know, you know, you know, all that stuff. He's pointing to them. No, no more of this, because and that was the problem. Because if you're getting, you can read that study there. The Jews, they're, they're thinking physical the entire time. They're thinking of this. They're thinking, oh, okay, what do we got to do? What do we got to, you know? And Jesus is like, no, I am that bread of life. You know, eating and drinking is synonymous with believing. Believe on me, and then you have that eternal life. And they stumbled at it. Because why? They're so used to a law of works, and that's why many of the disciples, they went away, because, oh, wait a second, here's that bread of life, you know, the one that I actually give you true eternal life, and here it is running from, and now they're going, oh, we, 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 don't, we really don't want that, you know. And, that's, and then, so they stumbled at it. But the point is, it, it mentioned, again, works of the law. I don't, like I said, I don't see how you get around that. So the very next chapter, and this is where, to me, it gets, it gets even plainer than this, if it wasn't already, chapter 10, the evil Romans chapter 10. <laughs> um, looking at verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Verse 3, for, and here you go. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God, Verse 4, for the Christ is, is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. See, the law works your self-righteousness because you have to, yes, you have to have faith. No argument there. But you still had to do certain things. You still had to do the sacrifices, keep the Sabbath day, keep the feast, and do, you know, you know, make sure you're not unclean. And if you do, okay, okay, then okay, then go to the priest to get unclean. All these different things, all the different dietary laws, all these different, you know. It was then because because now because again if one of those guys if, if if a Jew today were to show up and say and you asked them how are you saved or for anyone for that matter you ask them if they're saved you know I I didn't know you're saved what 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 do people used to say I go to church I've been baptized I do this I donated at the at the canned food drive I did I I worked the service I, I I preached all my life I healed in people's name I did many wonderful works I pro you know, all you know, they start ratting off things they can boast if you were a Jew you could say uh, I I I followed the law perfectly you know I kept the Sabbath all these different things and I'm going to show you passages this where Paul says this of himself okay he is able to boast that's called boasting and the point is when you believe in Jesus Christ that the law ends it's over. It's going by the establishment of righteousness. And, and to prove this, here's, here's a quotation from the Old Testament, verse 5. For Moses described with the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. That's a quotation fr from the Levitical law, Leviticus 18.5. You can check it out if you want to. Leviticus 18.5. Um, and they, again, look at the verse. That the man which doeth, he's doing things, shall live by them. So you had to live and do certain things. That's called self-righteousness. That's called works. So I, I just, I, I really, I mean, like I said, I understand why people will reject it because it's just, again, they're just, they're unstable, they're unlearned, and they're just, their pride of just, we know we can't have that, you know. But you, you still kind of just, you kind of sit there in awe and you go, guys, come on, what, what, like what gives? It, it says it right there outright. But here's another good tie-in passage to kind of tie in what I was just getting to. Go to Philippians chapter 3. Now this is where actually Paul gives a bit of a testimony of himself here. And let's see what and so let's see what he has to say. And we'll just start at verse one just to get the full context. But Philippians chapter three, starting at verse one, says, "Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in, in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh." Verse four. And, and, and now I'm say I got a butt in here. Remember now it said Romans chapter eight. It talked about uh, I mentioned earlier how it was weak through the flesh. So here, so here, so Paul setting up the context. Have no confidence in the flesh. Again, if you read over in Galatians, again it talks about the works of the flesh because the law works your flesh. You see, we're getting at here. 
Paul set up the context to this. Verse 4, though I, might, though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that, that, that he had whereof he might trust in the flesh, I am more. So he, again, then he gives his testimony. Here, at least a little bit of it here. Verse 5, circumcised the eighth day of the sock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, in Hebrew of the Hebrews. I mean, so, I mean, look, this guy is as Jewish as you can get. He's in Hebrew of the Hebrews, of the tribe of Benjamin. He, he's been circumcised in the eighth day. He's got all the things he needs there. As touching the law, a Pharisee. So believe me, he was zealous, all right. You know, I mean, he, and again, getting a Pharisee. So he knew that law inside and out, backwards and forwards. You know, he's a Pharisee. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church. He was so zealous, he persecuted the church. And that's what we just read in Romans chapter, chapter 10. Where they, they, they have a zeal of God, but not a corn of knowledge. Paul was out there doing doing what he thought was right, but it was he was zealous about it, but he was wrong. Until, of course, then Jesus showed up on the road to Damascus to you know, set him straight. Um... But look at this. This is so key. Touching the righteous which is in the law, blameless. And that is so key. So many of these guys, these, these non-dispensational guys just love to bypass that. He was, look, the law cannot save you. Okay, your righteous cannot save you. We've already established that. Absolutely. No argument there. But the fact is, he's being called blameless and yet, and yet also, and many of these same people will tell you that their sins were still not taken away yet. And again, there's no way they could have. But he's being called blameless. Uh oh, you know, you had, you had to live and do a certain thing, like we said. He's being considered blameless because guess what? The sacrifices that were involved, all the different things, he was blameless. You couldn't. Yes, and he, yes, yes. Obviously, people sinned. Okay, I'm not saying he was sins perfect. That's not what I was talking about. He was blameless because of because when he would fall in sin or do something, then he'd have the sacrifice to then to then then have the, have those sins the sins excuse me covered. So he's considered blameless. Verse 7, But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. And listen to all those great things you did. <laughs> Bunch of crap. <laughs> you know, as he says in verse 8, Yea, Dallas, and I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, do count the but dumb, that I may win Christ. So all those great things, you know, that you did, they're meaningless. They're nothing. You know, because guess what? Because, guys, guess what? God's not interested in what you did. God's not interested in your accomplishments. What is your attitude towards Him? And in verse 9, here you go. Another plain proof text. And be found in Him. In Him means, you know, you're saved, you know. And be found in Him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law. But that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. I don't know how much clear you can get on that. So we talked about a minute ago, Romans chapter 10. Not having your own righteousness. Then it says, which is of the law. Because you had to do and live a certain way. That's why Paul is considered blameless. His own righteousness, he can then boast. As I talked about Romans chapter 3. Where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law? The law of faith, you know. Um, and, then that, but then, and then notice again, it's contrasted. But that which is through the faith of Christ. You see? It's very plain. Verse 10, That I may know him, the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death, by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. So it's just, it's all right there in front of you. Now we're going to go back um, a little bit to Galatians. Because again, if you, people, if you want to, you, if you ever want to deal with a work salvationist cult, they're trying to shove you back under Old Testament law and get you to do all these, like, all these, like, Hebraic stuff, Galatians is the book to do it in. Because this is exactly what the book is refuting, is, is, is all these Judea, Judaizers and, and all, all these Ebionites that were coming along trying to get the people that were saved and then saying, oh, but okay, now you got to be circumcised. Now you got to do this. Now you got to do that. You know, that's what's going on there. I mean, this is the rebuke to that. So what's he say? Uh, Galatians chapter 2, starting at verse 14. Uh, which I'll wait for you to get there. Galatians chapter 2, verse 14. Okay. And it reads, But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter before them all, If thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Gentile, or I'm sorry, as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as, the, as do the Jews, who are Jews by nature, and not sinners of the Gentiles? Verse 16, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, 
but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. And it's amazing, because I've given people that, that passage, and, and people, and, pe and I, I, I kid you not, they, they all say, see, see, you're proving our point. It, it, says, it, it, says, it says we're not justified by the law. No, it says we're not justified by the works of the law. There was works involved. You, I, you can't get around that. There were works involved. I, and that's the thing. Yes, we cannot justify it. There's, it's no. There's, yes, I agree. There's no way to make me justify it by the works of the law, because it involves your righteousness, as we've already covered. And your righteousness will not get you to heaven. You need Jesus Christ's righteousness because you are a sinner. Verse 17. But if, if we, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. But though, oop, sorry, wind blew my page. <laughs> For I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the, in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. For I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if I just come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Now, continuing on into chapter 3, we read, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you, that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ, ha Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. This only, this only what I learn of you, received ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, and are now made perfect by the flesh? Again, remember how I talked about earlier? The law works your flesh. You know, the law is weak through the flesh. It does in Romans chapter 8, because that's what it works. It works your flesh. You know, it's working your self-righteousness. It's working all these different things you have to do. Uh, verse 4, Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he by doeth, doeth he it by the works of the law, by the hearing of faith. Even as Abraham believed God and was accounted to him for righteousness. See, see, Abraham was justified by faith. You know, it, people, it's an example. Not okay. His faith wasn't even in Jesus Christ. Again, it's a whole big old spiel. Oh, there. We're not going to go there. But the point is, again, just the example of faith that he had. And um, again, I'll, I'll post a link to a video I did not too long ago, explaining the thing, with, the thing with Romans four and Hebrews eleven and James two. I, I explain how how you reconcile that. But anyway, verse seven: Know ye therefore that which are our faith the same are the children of Abraham. And the Scripture foreseeing that, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith. See, foreseeing it wasn't there yet. Foreseeing. Preach before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, And these shall all nations be blessed. So they, I'm sorry, so then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many are, are, as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it, is, for it is written, Curse is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. You know? I, I, just, I just do not understand how people cannot get around this. It's plainly teaching works. I think I have the reference to that. Um, uh, actually, no, I don't. But um, the the point is, the point again, you can read though. Curses is, is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Remember, you have to do something, you have to live a certain way. Verse eleven, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. Verse twelve, and the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Well, what did we talk about earlier? Yeah, again, quoting again, quoting again, Leviticus eighteen five. Man that do with them shall live in them. You had to live a certain way. You had to do things. That's your self righteousness. That's called works. Verse 13 Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So it's pretty simple to me. So there you go. There's again. We didn't have to go to the Old Testament to prove that. I can just we can sit right in Paul's epistles to show you. But now that being said, let us actually go to the Old Testament. We're going to just look at a few references, just a few, because there's we can show a lot, but just a few. First, go to Exodus chapter. What I write down here, 32. This is this is this is what amazes me. These people, a lot of these guys, they they will just be up there, just you know, just you know, you know, him and hawing and. Just keep berating you and, just, and saying, "Oh, they're 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 they were eternally secure. They couldn't lose their salvation. Faithful and faithful alone." Da da da. 
And the problem is, you can ask for this stuff, and they, they, they go right back to Paul's epistles. They they never, ever show you the scriptures in the Old Testament that, that say, okay, where's eternal security? They don't have any, because they don't exist. But in Exodus chapter 32, looking at, um, we'll start at verse 3 to get context, and it came to pass on the morrow, this is, this is talking about after uh, um, Aaron and the, and the children of Israel, they, they had made the false god. Um, and it came to pass on the morrow that Moses said to the people, Ye have sinned a great sin, and now I will go up to the Lord. Peradventure I shall make an atonement for your sin. And Moses returned unto the law, or, I'm sorry, unto the Lord, and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin, and made them gods of gold. Verse 32, Yet yet now, if, if thou wilt forgive their, their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. And again, not, 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 not to be blotted out of something means you had to have already been in it. Which is the book of life, which again you see that opened up in, Revel in the book of Revelation. If your, name, if your name is not written in the book of life, you're cast into the lake of fire. Verse 33 And the Lord said to Moses, Whoever, whoever has sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Uh, then, why well, happen to catch the tone of security there? Who has ever sinned against me, will I blot out against my book? Um, that's someone that, that lost it, people. That's, that's not tone of security. You lost it. <laughs> you know? If you weren't obedient, if you weren't living and doing a certain thing, guess what? You're, that's it. You're done. You sin against me, you're out. You're going to hell. You're gonna have sin upon you. And you die. Again, another one. This is this is another good one. Um, Ezekiel chapter 18. And I, I gotta say this too, because I've seen these guys. What these guys do, and they, they all, without fail, this is what they all do. They all do this thing where they say, they, they come up, and I talked about this in other videos where, about, about the whole no prayer issue, but some of these guys, they come up and, and they start telling you, oh, no, this is not your eternal salvation, this is your physical salvation. And basically, I'll translate that for you, basically every time that there's something that's contrary to what they want to teach you, we'll just call it physical salvation, and then, and then every time it says believe or something like that, we'll just make it eternal, you know. It's ridiculous. And so, so this is one of the places they again that plainly teaches a man exercising his self righteousness. And so they, and so they on cue are like, well, no, see, this is your physical. Which, I, it's it's absurd. We're looking at verse nine of Ezekiel chapter eighteen. It says, "Yet say ye, why doth not the Son bear the iniquity of the Father? And the Son hath done that which is lawful and right, and hath kept all my statutes and hath done them. He shall surely live. The soul that sinneth, it shall die." The Son shall not bear the iniquity of the Father, neither shall the Father bear the iniquity of the Son. The righteousness of the, of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But the wicked will turn from all his sins that he hath committed, and will keep all my statutes, and, and do that which is lawful and right. He shall surely live, and he shall not die. All his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. In his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, what, what, what are we talking about this whole time? There you go. Confirmation of what Paul was saying in his epistles. His righteousness and what the he hath done, he shall live. Um, that the man that doeth things shall live by them. Yep, I would say that's called self-righteousness. That's called works. Hath I any pleasure at, at, at all that the, the wicked should die, saith the Lord, and not that he should return from his ways and live? Verse 24, when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity. Again, when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? That is a that is a rhetorical question. In other words, he's saying no. All his righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned. In his trespass that he hath trespassed and in his sin that he hath sinned, in them shall he die. You know, the, 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 the saying, you know, shall die in your sins, is what it's talking about. You're going to die in your sins. All that you've done, all that your stuff you did, it all gets absolved. He's not going to remember it anymore. You sinned against me, and you're going to die in your sins. That's what it's saying. Verse 25. Yet ye say, the way of the Lord is not equal. Here, here now, O house of Israel, is not my way equal? Are not your ways unequal? When a, when a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness, and committeth iniquity, and dieth in them, where his iniquity that he hath done, shall surely he die. Now, verse 27, again, it's amazing. All these guys, they all say, hey, it's, it's physical salvation, physical salvation. Okay, verse 27. Again, when the, when the wicked man turneth away from his righteousness that he hath committed, and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. Wait, so he saves his soul? 
he's doing it, so his his actions, his self righteous, and it says his soul. That's not physical. <laughs> so, there you go. That's not physical. That, or yeah, I'm sorry. That that is not physical. That is their eternal salvation. It involved works. Verse 28, because he considereth and turneth away from all his transgressions that he hath committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. And uh, that's all we have there for that. And like I said, people, this is just a handful of scriptures. This is just a, again, this is not the end all and end all be all but in this study. But I do want to end it on this. We'll, we'll look at Ephesians here. And this whole thing comes from people that have failed to rightly divide, as we've, we've talked about. Ephesians chapter 3, go there with me, we'll end it here. Um, Hebrews chapter, or, sorry, Hebrews, Ephesians, excuse me, Ephesians chapter 3, looking at verse 1. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, you've heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, Lord, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote before in a few words, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge and the mystery of Christ, verse 5, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as is now, is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. The Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body, partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effectual working of his power. It was a mystery. It was revealed. We talked about in Galatians. It was, there was a foreshadowing, certainly, but that was not how they were saved. If you deny that, you're just denying scripture. And uh, quite frankly, you're, you're, it, this this whole thing of again, I hear people all the time. It, you're, it's God's character. Yeah, that's exactly the point. People, He cannot allow righteous. He cannot. He cannot allow your own works into heaven. I agree fully. But that does not overthrow what the Scripture has to say and what they had to do to obtain that righteousness. Again, Paul said he was blameless, and yet he was. And obviously, he was not sinlessly perfect. We know that, be, you know, from a multitude of Scriptures. But he was still blameless on the basis of what he had to do. So I just, there's no way of getting around it. Your King James Bible very plainly teaches that the, the Old Testament law taught a faith and work system. Anyone denies that, they're just, they're just lying, and they are unstable and unlearned, and they're just resting the scriptures to their own destruction. It's simple as that. And that's just my, again, that's my question with these people. Again, it's like, what do you do with the sacrifices? Like, what, what okay, if that wasn't you having to do something, what in the, what on earth was that for? <laughs> I mean, people, I mean, again, I'll ask a question. If someone who didn't do the sacrifices, does he go to heaven? You know, or, you know, I, I, actually, I'll say like this. Does he, does he inherit eternal life? You know, will he eventually get, you know, will he eventually get to heaven, is what I'm trying to say? Um, if you say yes to that question, then, okay, basically, then all the sacrifices are basically worthless. All that blood that was spilled was meaningless. The fact that, again, the certain, the certain lamb, the certain ram, the certain... They had to do, all that was meaningless. All the all the ways they had to do it. They had to you know put you know, put some on the tip of their tongue and you know some of the you know, some of the corner of their ear, some on their toe. You know, what what was the point of all that then? Why if that didn't matter? All that like all that real precise ritualistic stuff. The, the lamb had to be a certain way. The all this it had to be a certain time, certain altar only. The, why? Why if that, if that didn't matter? If if why none of that would matter. I just that's what I'm saying. I just I can't get past that. But. But if you say no, they had to do it. Okay, then you're meaning to teaching works. They had to live and do a certain thing, you know. You know, or or your third option is to say, well, okay, well they, okay, they would they would just done it regardless, you know. If they were truly saved, they would truly have the works. Well, I guess you're preaching a form of lordship salvation, then, wouldn't you? You know. <laughs> so there's no way around it, people. I mean, again, same with, again, same with the Sabbath day. What happens if you didn't keep the Sabbath? I mean, there read read number fifteen sometime. Uh, and see what happened to the guy who picked up sticks. People, I mean, he picked up people. We're not talking like he was, like, having a party and he's whatever. He picked up sticks. <laughs> and they had to stone him to death. He didn't, he's not keeping the law. So, the point is, brethren, this, hopefully this was not a, I, oh, I didn't want to make this too much of a long study. But uh, if you encounter these people, here are some scriptures for you, just plain as day. Because I've seen people, they will try to defend this this thing of faith and works in the Old Testament, but they don't do a very good job of doing it. And because they just, they start like manipulating scriptures that really don't say what it it says. But these do. These do, in fact, with the ones I showed you, teach that a man involves his own righteousness. That's called your own works. If you have your own righteousness, that means, you're, that means that you are involved, you are doing something. Which gives you the, which then allows you to elevate yourself and then boast. No way around it. Can't argue with it. 
So that is going to be our study here for today. Hopefully this helped you out, and um, we'll see you all the next time. Have a great day. God bless you all.